Hallelujah. Okay. Tell everybody around you, Shalom, and sit down. And pick your Bible, but sit down. Tell them Shalom. Shalom. All is well. Tell them, no matter how, whatever is going through, all is well. All is well. Let's take this reading. That's why I say you should sit down. Daniel chapter 3. Hallelujah. Just before we read, let me tell you where I got my inspiration from. It's an exhortation. But it's also a study of the pathway that every one of us will follow in this Christian faith. Nobody will bypass it. Nobody. Nobody will bypass it. If you are going to make it. And I'm sure this brother may be listening to me now. From Ugeli. And I'm sure you are watching me now. And somehow, because of an accident he had, he is um, on a wheelchair. You know, he's on a wheelchair and he does, you know, just paralyzed like that. And you know the difficulties associated with that. And they have a fellowship that is led and uh, somewhere around his house or so, he gave a portion or something like that. If I get the story right. But the emphasis is this. That he came across this ministry through the bright television. And naturally, if you are sincere, looking at all the errors that are going on, and you are sincere, there are questions you will ask. This young man, as I was saying, here is he physically challenged, but he has seen something that anchors his soul. And a pastor is telling him he should not watch the bright television. Because obviously, he's going to know the truth. He's going to know the truth and be free from bondage. And so, he commands him, stop it. He refuses. Well, according to him, that he came one day and provoked him and maybe said something he didn't like and asked him, ask the doctor, please walk out of my house. But later on, he called to apologize and sent for the doctor back and told him, please, I am sorry, I got angry and I spoke to you that way. And try to convince him the blessings he receives from this bright television. Well, the story goes that when the man left, he came and told him that they are moving that fellowship away from his house. That they are disbanding that fellowship. And so he will have no fellowship again. He now, the, his daughter that he has that takes care of him move him to the toilet, move him to this, move him everywhere, was going for some exams or so that he should be away for four days. And so he had to talk to a family who was part of that family uh, fellowship to please let him, his uh, son or so, to come and stay with him for just four days to help him. And when that doctor had it, he went to that family and to stop them. They should not send anybody to help him. You see what Christianity has degenerated into? What is his offense? Because he is following the truth. Nothing more. And imagine how heartless somebody who says a Christian is. Somebody who is challenged. And so he called me. I was narrating to me. Then he remembered, hallelujah, that while he was watching a program, somebody was saying, a pastor said he was from Ogeli. And so quickly we decided, I called uh, a camp commander that they should look for the contacts 
other brethren. There are other brethren in Ugeli. There are brethren that are following us. And I'm sure they are hearing us now. Now, and after that phone talk, I began to meditate. I began to meditate that this man is suffering what he's suffering just because of a stand he took. As helpless as he is, one would have expected that because of his condition, because of his condition, that he would have compromised. Because of his estate, because he's physically challenged, so he will need a lot of help from people around him. But instead, he decided, hallelujah, to still keep his stand. And I was meditating on that. And then I felt, yes, it is needful for me to go back to that exhortation I gave so many years ago that I titled Bow and Born. I want to look at it again a little deeper. How many of you had that message? Can I see your hand? Okay. Put that your hand. How many of you did not hear that message? Eh? <laughs> it's so many years ago I preached it. That message became more useful. I mean, um, more inspiring again to me to see truly that if you are ever going to go to heaven and get a reward, church, you cannot bypass the cross. So, let's pick our thoughts from, because these stories in the Bible, they are there to teach us about salvation. They are not just story of somebody. Every story in the Bible, if properly understood, you, you will, it will be applicable to every believer now. Every story in the Bible. That is why we do Bible study. It's not to read history. The Bible is not a history book. Hallelujah. It's not. It's not a history book. If it's a history book, many of you, that God talks to you, sometimes when he wants to talk to you, he will just give you a scripture. Scripture that was written, how many, uh, almost 2,000 years ago. Some of them, more than two, 3,000 years ago. It will flash the scripture before you that you should pick the answer to your question in that scripture. So this Bible is not a history book. It's a living book. Now Daniel chapter 3. Let's read the story there. Now this is the time that the children of Israel were in captivity. And let me read it from verse 1. Let me read the whole story so that when we are making reference to it, we can uh, understand what we are talking about. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits. For the purpose of Bible reading, somebody once asked me, which image? What did the image look like? The image that Nebuchadnezzar made was actually the image of Daniel. He molded the image of Daniel. And you can confirm that in chapter 2. You read it, you will see that in chapter 2. Towards the end of the chapter, it's clear there whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, 
the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then an herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the corner flute, harp, suck, a suckboard, satry, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, what are you to do? You are to fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship it, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. I repeat verse 6 for emphasis. There is a fire, Abby. Fairy that is serious fire. When you hear that sound, everybody in Babylon bow wherever you are, you hear it and worship. You have to fall down and worship it. And whoso, verse 6, fall it not down. If you refuse to bow and worship, shall the same hour, that same moment, be cast into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sabre, satry, and all kinds of music, all the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Let's see where the story becomes interesting from verse 8. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackball, satry, and dosma, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fairy furnace there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon who are they? Shadrach Meshach and Abednego these men, O king have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up they were in captivity the Jews were in captivity the Jews hallelujah they are slaves subject to the laws of a king that has power over life and death who are you to come against the law of the king he has power he can just order look kill and they will kill and there is no human rights. It's not like this our days now. So for anybody to stand and withstand a king like that you know there is a revelation behind him. Amen. See it is not listen church anointing does not make you defeat Satan. Is somebody understanding me? Anointing. Anointing does not make you defeat Satan. Amen. In fact, those that easily fall to temptation are gifted people. Those that easily fall to temptation in this our age, they are the gifted people. Amen. Bible school cannot make you resist Satan. Therefore, there is no degree in theology you have that can make you resist Satan. Listen, the title you bear does not determine your spiritual level. Oh, glory be to God. I want to say something. Oh. The title you bear does not give you any high spiritual level 
to be promoted from ordinary member to assistant pastor to full pastor to senior pastor to reverend very reverend reverend doctor archbishop chief what all those ones they have nothing to do as far as satan is concerned amen listen who do men say i the son of man am and upon that revelation of who you know him to be christ said he will build his church and the case of hell shall not prevail and you know what and that revelation you cannot get it in bible school peter flesh and blood did not reveal this to you see if it is a man as i am preaching now hallelujah if you ever catch it and you will walk on it the only reason you will catch what i am preaching now and you will walk on it is because god has quickened it to you except god quickened it to you it is just an academic exercise and satan can come and explain it away from your heart so it's not because you are hearing me preaching now until god quickens what i am saying have you not been reading bible read it every day read every day then one day you will read the same thing you have been reading every day and the different thing will be quickened to you oh yes praise the lord and so here they are listen why did they see only three of them shadrach meshach and abednego they were other jews it means the rest bowed the rest bowed there was a time ahab brought idolatry to israel until the whole of israel one man thought he was the only one elijah elijah thought he was the only one until god had to tell him he has seven thousand that did not bow in every age even in israel the majority of the nation of israel rejected jesus christ but he had his elect that believe and up to now there are jews that are believing hallelujah there are jews i have met one of them i have discussed one of them he was my guide when i went to israel uh, for, for pilgrimage and he believed and the day i i i i i, I, I saw he was so uh, 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 you know so sincere so i had to drop the message for him and i dropped so many things he was guiding me in the tours of the promised land i was using the opportunity and guiding him about what grace is all about <laughs> praise the lord and he came back to tell me the next day that he discussed with his wife and his wife told him all i was speaking was the truth praise the lord now now and then he told me, he said, he said, look, Pastor Moses, he said, see where my problem was. He said, and all of them. He said, they are more in the business of telling the Jews about salvation through Christ, about grace. That is the area of their ministry. Those of them who believe, they are called Messianic Jews. They are called Messianic Jews. That is, they believe on Christ the Messiah. He said so much. He said they are in the business of going to preach to the Jews for them to just accept Christ. So they have not bothered to go to look at it that women cannot preach, that denomination is this, that women should not wear trousers, should not dress certain way, and then some of the other errors that uh, people are saying concerning water baptism. He said he has not taken time to look at that because what is foremost in their heart is to get the Jews to believe Christ until he didn't know that the gospel was deeper than that and he was thanking me for that revelation and i gave him a book that i took along exposition of the seven church ages by william Brown. praise the lord and we are still in touch with him he has promised to come here when we shall be dedicating this place praise the lord now now listen every time god has elect a remnant and even in this our age, he has people that he call his elect. His elect, 
they are not, not known by an address. You are not a bride of Jesus Christ because you come to Bride Assembly Church. You are not a bride of Jesus Christ because you believe with Abraham, you are following the message that he brought. To follow it is more than confessing or holding some sermon books. Listen, church, we keep saying this with all passion because Christianity has been messed up and the proper bearing from air to glory has been misplaced. People, what they call Christianity, church, generality of the people, they are not Christians. Some of them claim to be Christians, but they are not of Christ. They know Christ according to them, but Christ does not know them. And this is what we try to tell you. Here they are in captivity with up risk of their lives. They risk their lives. And verse 13. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, he was very angry. He commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought this man before the king. Nebuchadnezzar, the king, I mean, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, that at one time you hear the sound of the cornet flute, harp, sackcloth, satry, and dosima, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. What he's actually saying is, he wants to repeat it before them face to face. Maybe what he had. Who, who are you to be so bold? Let, let me confirm whether they are lying against you people before I take my action. Well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Hey! Listen to the elect of God. You can't scare them with hunger. You can't scare them with dismissal from job. You cannot scare them with, 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 with death. You cannot scare them with frustration. You cannot scare them for any reason. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, go! Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, O Nebuchadnezzar, listen, they were telling to his face, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God who we serve is able. He is what? He is what? How many people know he is able? Oh, put down your hand the first. Put down your hand. I have told you something. It's very easy to confess faith. It's another to go through the situation. Amen. Stop hitting your chest in your hand. Me, as you see me so, I'm not a fornicator. Lie, lie, I'm not a fornicator. Stop it. Stop it first. Because before you say I am not a fornicator, you have the history that you have conquered it. Before you say you, you, you are not this, you are not that, I am not a sinner, I, 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 I am not this, I am not that, I am not this, I am not that. Be sure that you have an experience that it confronted you. David did not just because he was circumcised. Therefore, he, where is that Goliath? Where is that Goliath? It's not because he, because he was circumcised. It's more than that. Too. He has a history. He faced a lion. He faced a bear another time. And delivered the sheep of his father alive from an animal that could finish him. Without any weapon. Now, who is this man? That was history. And he quoted the history. He quoted what happened. Before he now look at him. And say who is this uncircumcised church. It's not that I don't fornicate. I don't steal. I don't do this. I don't do this. Therefore Satan cannot touch me. Satan cannot touch me. He can touch you. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. He says what? We serve, he says, he's able to deliver us. It will be so, our God whom we serve is able, he is able, able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace. He is able. Why would they say he is able? He is able. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are facing death and you don't care. You don't care because he added and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. He said it. Don't just think that they were speaking for speaking sake. Then they added. But if not, if not, this next verse is the reason why they spoke the way they were speaking. The next verse is the reason why they spoke in verse 17, verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. That means, even if our God does not deliver us, that means they are ready to die for their stand. They were ready to die for their stand. And they did not hold meeting over it. Too. They did not sign an agreement over it. Too. It was not because they are friends. So. Hallelujah. I think one song says, if you put your trust in your papa, your papa will fail you. If you put your confidence in your friend, your friend will fail you. Praise the Lord. Woe unto anyone that will put confidence in a man. They did not enter agreement. Oh. They didn't enter agreement. Oh. I have a friend of mine when we were in the military school, young boys in Zaria there, years back. We were not supposed to go to town. We are the closest of friends. We are not supposed to boarding school and with strict military discipline. But we normally sneak out to go watch cinema and do all the things and sneak back through the fence and jump and come back. Just throw and see like that. My closest friend, we went out together. And then when we went, we were in a, in a, in a, in a group. And then we jammed an officer in the town. And we ran away. The officer identified us. The next day he came to our class. You, 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 stand up. We came out. You people were seen in the town yesterday. And we know the result, what will happen to us. So they lined us up one by one, one by one. And then we were all saying, no, we were not there. We said, no, sir, we, we didn't go to town. We didn't go anywhere. The man was shocked. I, I saw you, you saw me. Nine line, we are not the ones, sir. We are not the ones, we are not the ones. He said, yeah, all of you lined up. Were you there or not? You, one by one. This one said, lie, lie. It is my turn. I said, lie, lie. The last person was that my close friend. When he reached the door, he said, yes, sir, I was there. <laughs> so, they say, you, you are free. The rest of you, guard room. They went and locked us up. So, Ikoyi is not the first place they locked me up. They have been locking me up before. Praise the Lord. Now, 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 so, so, when he said, look, I said, I told look, I said, ah! He looked at me, he said, wait him. To him, he knew that if he said different, they will free him. So, you don't think that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had that type of meeting. They didn't have that type of meeting. Their meeting point was their faith. Hallelujah. Their meeting point was their faith. Let's read on. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should hit the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fairy furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their horses, and their hats, and their other garments, 
and we are cast into the midst of the funny furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to confirm that that fire was real. Hallelujah. Verse 23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound in the midst of the burning fairy furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spoke and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O God. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. They were not bound. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Walking in the midst of the fire. And they have no heart. And the form of the fort is like, is like the Son of God. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. It didn't look like an ordinary human being. It was an angel. It was an angel. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fairy furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. No was an hair, one single hair, one single hair of their head singed. Neither was their coats changed, nor the smell of fire. Hallelujah. Had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree uh -huh, that every people, nation, and language will speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses shall be made a dunghill. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Hallelujah. And I love verse 30. I love verse 30. I love verse 30. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province, the province of Babylon. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What is the decree? The decree is if you don't bow to their gods you will burn but I am here to tell you it is a lie it is if you bow that you will burn if you bow church this story is telling us it's not just Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego he is telling us that are partakers of grace from the day of Pentecost till Christ will come of the sufferings that we shall go because we will refuse to bow the elect hallelujah situations will come to confront you to tell you amen if you don't bow you will suffer I am telling you you will not suffer if you bow, that is when you will burn. You will die. Praise God. 